Um, well, you know, the Gautama online, of course. This presentation is on not just the FMF. I have to explain a little bit about the genetics. So I'm put a genetics 101 there. Uh, about 10 minutes of genetics. So we all understand how this process works, what are the mechanisms responsible for genetic disorders and how disorders work. Then we will talk about FMF, which is called the Feminine Mediterranean Fever, and uh, then the genetics of it, then the protein products, the epidemiology, how is it spread in the world. Then we go to, the, uh, to our research that uh, I conducted with, the, with my colleagues in Armenia and we published it, then if we get a time, we'll just talk a little bit about a couple of case studies that were very interesting and I had um, the chance of being involved with them, and then current research, uh, future research, and uh, conclusion. So this is our <coughs> index that we're going to go through. All right, good. Here's a typical double helix that you have heard a lot, uh, and we have the, it's called deoxynagolucraic acid, so ATCG. There are four bases, and you can see that uh, on one side there is a, uh, and I apologize, we all missed our laser pointers today, so I have to maybe walk to closer and so. So these are the bases here, and they complementary bases on the other base. There are major groups, minor groups, which we don't have to do. So these little letters, which are called the bases, they basically are the backbone structure of the DNA. So, where is this DNA? You can see here is the double helix DNA, and each DNA is packaged in a gene form. And then there is uh, only 3 to 5 percent of the human genome is coding DNA, the rest is just junk DNA, and, or maybe we don't know what it is, that's why we call it junk DNA. Uh, but, uh, so, this is the structure of a gene, and genes uh, have a promoter region, if you can see on the far left, promoter where the the process starts, then there are exons and introns. So exons are the coding regions. Exons are very, very important. Introns are spliced out. If you can see, first they are transcribed to an RNA form, and then from RNA they are transcribed out, so the blue segments are gone, and only the yellow parts and the red parts, which are the uh, ends of the genes, are there. Then this DNA, this RNA, is converted to amino acid sequence, which is the protein sequence. And what are the proteins? Proteins are what we are. Proteins are our skins, our bones, heart, muscle, brain, uh, you name it. Everything in our body is comprised of protein. Proteins are our hormones. Uh, proteins do the work in our body. Uh, and also, of course, fat helps the proteins to be stabilizing in the body and sugar, high carbohydrates, both in the structure but mostly are the fuel of the body. That's more. So DNA versus RNA because we have to know what RNA is and what protein is. DNA is double-stranded, it's stable and it has different uh, sugars in it, it's for protection and it's only in nucleus. RNA is converted from DNA, it's transcribed from DNA, then moves to the cytoplasm and is translated to protein. Proteins are in cytoplasm and then all over the body they conduct the work. And DNA transmits the hereditary information. So here is how the binding works. Uh, adenine binds to thymine, so A2T binding and C2G binding, guanine, cytosine. These are hydrogen bonds, very simple chemistry and we all remember from our kindergarten chemistry, that's how we learned it, right? Uh, hydrogen ions. And so we have two of them for adenine thymine and three of them for cytosine guanine. Here is how it's translated. So the double helix is converted to a single, heli a single uh, uh, strand which is called the mRNA, and this is the mRNA, and mRNA is translated to each one of these amino acids. Of course we know that we have 20 amino acids, 11 of them are essential, that we have, 9 of them are essential, we get from nature, that's why we have to eat protein, and 11 of them body can actually build those. So here is the biological information flow, we have technical problem, that's why I had made some animation, tried to show off, but it didn't work, so I better not show off ever. Uh, this is how it works, the DNA is transcribed, transcription to RNA, RNA is translated to protein, DNA replicates itself, RNA replicates itself, that's how uh, we kind of rejuvenate ourselves, we create new cells in our bodies, 
and we, uh, through the DNA replication, and we, I, I have a picture I can show you so we can get to the mutations that cause the disease if we move on. So here's the transcription process. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, factors involved, and uh, it's not the topic of today, but these are all proteins individually. They're all proteins that do bind to the DNA. They convert the DNA form so RNA polymerase can bind, and through promoter region can start the coding process. Now, each one of these, if they're mutated, they can uncontrollably start uh, transcribing the DNA, which is called the cancer. So, uh, which is not today's topic, but hopefully in the future we can talk about cancer genetics. Very fascinating and moving fast. Uh, but this is where the issue, the, how it works, the transcription. So, then this gets to mRNA. And then mRNA goes through a ribosome, those green two uh, circles, and it's translated into protein and tRNAs come, protein, uh, amino acids are bind to it, they come, they sit in the RNA and they bind to each other and create a protein which we'll see in the next slide. So here are our proteins, different shapes, uh, different, shapes different styles, uh, we have the beta sheath, we have the alpha helix, we have the the t secondary st structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure, which is combination of the proteins, and it gets very, very complicated. Uh, maybe 20 years ago, a couple of scientists got Nobel Prize just to show the uh, tertiary structure of the <coughs> proteins and to, to be able to crystallize it. So that's how little we know about these things, but that's why bioinformatics is very important, because once we start understanding the sequence and how the shapes work, we can actually, using computer programs, we can predict how the tertiary or quaternary structures of the proteins will be, rather than going through laborious work in the laboratory to try to uh, find it. Next. So, variation and selection. This is a very important topic in genetics. Variation occurs in DNA on DNA level, and then selection occurs in protein level. So, 